Right. Hello, everyone. Uh, we're live, I think, I hope. Uh, welcome to this uh, Game Republic uh, funding event today. Um, I hope you're all doing well, uh, keeping safe and all that. Um, delighted to welcome today, we have uh, two speakers. We have uh, Ella Romanos from uh, Fundamentally Games. So, hello, Ella. Hi. <laughs> Are you coming live from the EU, Ella? Are you? Are you? There? I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> yes. Good stuff. See, it still works and everything. We're so far, <laughs> yeah. so that's not not too bad. Uh, also, uh, we have uh, Deborah Farley from the UK Games Fund. So, hi, Deborah. Hi. So I'm I'm not anywhere as exotic as the EU. I'm just up in Dundee. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's quite exotic. It's quite exotic. Yeah. Well. <laughs> uh, good. Good stuff. Um, so we'll be uh, hearing from Deborah in, in, a, in a while, um, just about the transfuser scheme. But um, first up, uh, Ella is going to do a presentation about uh, the various kind of funding that's available and some tips for uh, games companies as well on, on getting investments. So I'll shut up now and I'll hand over to Ella. Over to you. Well, thanks, Jamie. OK, I'm just going to share my slides. Right. So uh, I'm going to talk today about game dev financing uh, in 15 minutes. Uh, just a brief background about myself. Uh, so I'm, I'm the CEO of Fundamentally Games. We primarily run live ops for games, uh, but we're here to talk about financing. So uh, in my current role, the main thing we do is work with user acquisition funding. But in the past, I've run a VGTR loan fund. I've um, run an organization that wrote uh, grant applications for Innovate UK. I've advised various investment funds. I've helped devs with access to funding and I've raised money myself. So I've kind of got a bit of experience across all the areas. Um, what I'm going to do today is types of funding and what each type is suitable for. Some example funds that I think you should know about. You may know some of them already and a bit about how to get investor ready. But I'm going to do this in 15 minutes. I'm not going to cover everything in detail. This is a very much an overview. So um, what I'm going to do is look at funding types related to the stage of business or the game that you're at. And the reason I do this is to put, try and put it into context. But to be clear, there are always exceptions to every rule. This is a generalization. All funds vary slightly. They have different requirements. So whilst you know I'm putting them in one bracket, some may fit into others. Um, but it's this is really just to try and get you to, to understand the different types of funding and where they might fit in your journey as a developer. So first one, startup. You've got no funding. So uh, you'll notice I have the UK Games Fund at the top. Um, so here, uh, the challenge with this is the earlier you are, the harder it is to get funding. Um, so really, at this point in time, your options are uh, UK Games Fund, which uh, is great. The I hope you all know about the um, accelerators who provide funding as well. <laughs> um, now, accelerators don't just provide money. And if you just. But they're really good for startups who need support as well. Um, two that I particularly interested in is Global Top Round. Uh, which is a really interesting fun, um, accelerator, I think, and something that people should be aware of, uh, and Game Founders, which has been running for longer uh, various places around the world. Uh, then we have government startup loans, and I kind of have this here because I don't like them. Um, and the reason I don't like them is they require a personal guarantee. Um, but they are there, and it is a thing that you can get if you fit into the criteria. Uh, then we've got angels. So angel investors are going to invest equity. Uh, so they're going to take shares in your business. They're individuals who invest their own money. Therefore, they don't have a website. They're very much about building your network. You know, there are people in the industry who will invest uh, because they, you know, they've made money and they're interested in what you're doing. There are also angel investor networks across the UK. The challenge with those is finding the investors who are interested in games. Um, but, the, you know, they are an option. Uh, that's how we got our first pre-seed round um, and it can be a very viable option and then the final option here really is work for hire which obviously is very popular uh, for, for good reason uh, but the reality is it's also a slow route because you have to obviously balance delivering the work that you're doing on that versus making your own games but it is a very common route for people to start so once we start to get towards having a bit of money more money opens up which uh, is always a bit of a cash run to um, so public grants. So obviously the UK Games Fund does fit into that, but the unique thing or fairly unique thing about them is that you don't have to have match funding up front. So uh, public funding in most cases does require match funding. Um, you've got regional, national and European wide or certainly used to have. Uh, and the main thing with public funding of any type is that you need to understand 
how the funds work and what they're looking for. Um, but some typical examples that are quite popular, Innovate UK, Creative Europe, and actually the you know, these are all examples, uh, Creative England as well, of things where you can get money for that early stage. Um, and also tax credit loans. So nowadays you can get these against video games tax relief, but you can also often get them against R&D if you're claiming for it. The challenge with these is that they usually have a minimum amount. So if your project is small, you may not qualify for this, but it is very useful. Uh, some typical examples of tax credit loan companies, Buzz Capital, Headgear, Play Ignite are probably three of the main ones that I'm aware of. So then we go on to prototype. So once you've got something to show, it does become easier. Um, essentially, you know, once you can prove that what you're doing is not just your opinion that it's good and actually that you know, you've got something to show that there's potential that someone can get it in their hands, it becomes a lot easier. So at this point, um, you open up other routes. So early stage investment funds, I always struggle to know what to call these because they kind of cover a broad spectrum, but it basically means that go in earlier than your typical VC. And these can either be funds that are using the SEIS EIS scheme in the UK. Uh, if you don't know what that is, feel free to ask me uh, in questions later. Um, it can also mean that they're potentially looking for a specific type of project or team. Uh, so they might have a remit that is not just about money. Maybe they're looking at uh, supporting diversity and so on. Um, and you also can get VCs in here who are the ones who get involved more at pre-seed stage. So um, some examples, I would say, the, this new fund, the Moonrise Fund, which was announced recently, I believe they probably fit into here. I haven't seen in detail, but my, that's my feeling. Uh, Amplifier is another one. And also, I would argue mini clip uh, maybe fit into this um, space. And then you've got project financing. Now, this is pretty explanatory. Um, publishers are project financers, but the reason I'm not referring to publishers here is because although publishers can get involved at prototype, it's actually quite rare. They usually want the game to be a bit further on. Um, so I'll talk about publishers later. What we're talking about here is companies that provide project funding without the publishing. Um, some examples, Kowloon Knights, Wings Fund uh, and the Indie Fund. And then you've got crowdfunding. I probably don't really need to go much into that. I think we all know about Kickstarter. Um, the one thing I would say is it's probably the hardest type of funding, I would argue, um, because it is so high risk. And then you move on to actually being able to claim tax relief. So once you spend money, you can claim the money back from the government. Um, for those who don't know, essentially, if you don't know, find out. If you haven't applied for it on your game, apply for it. There is no minimum amount. If you are spending money, you can get money back in almost every case. So it's very much a do it. And video games tax relief is a no brainer. If you are also building tech, um, so you may be building an engine or anything that is beyond just the content of a game, R&D tax credits as well. And then you've got strategic grants. So these are games by the platform or the tech uh, providers. So probably the, one of the best known examples at the moment is Epic Mega Grants. Um, but there are others. Generally, when a new platform or tech comes out, uh, you know, the platform holder or the tech holder will have some funding. So we've seen stuff come from Oculus in the past, Magic Leap and so on. Uh, usually they require something to show, uh, you know, some kind of prototype. And then once you've got good progress, and to be clear, these days by good progress, I generally mean you have data. Um, I could talk about data forever, but in general, you can prove that it's not just your opinion that your game is good, basically. At this point, you start to open up some of the larger public grants. Now, with Brexit, I don't know uh, how this is affected, but, you know, there are some larger grants, particularly across the EU. Uh, the thing with larger public grants usually comes even more even longer timelines than some of the earlier ones. So they're not to be taken lightly, but they are there. Um, and then you've got publishers. And again, there's kind of two types of publishers and a lot of them cross both, those who fund dev and those who don't. Uh, so those who fund dev can come in at this stage. Um, you know, you probably don't need me to tell you about these. There's a lot of them and, you know, they're pretty high profile, but some good examples, Irregular Corp, uh, Raw Fury, uh, Curve Digital, Double Eleven, Green Man Gaming, Mini Clip, the list goes on. Um, and I think most of those are just the UK ones. So there's a lot of them out there, but they all have very different requirements for the type of games that they want. How do you find out? Look at their portfolio and ask them. 
uh, and then venture capital. So I think this is something that most people tend to be aware of in games uh, because there's some high profile um, investment funds, but ultimately VCs are looking for companies that want to scale and be the next big thing. So they want to invest in Supercell, you looking for companies who want to stay small and do creative projects not just you know that they want to make they're looking for somebody who really wants to grow big so they're a really good source of funding but they are only for certain companies um and it's really important to understand that because if you don't fit into that and there's nothing wrong with that you know your business may not be the type that fits into that it's not a route that you should go down but some examples london venture partners hero capital makers fund play ventures again there's a ton of these. There's some that are purely about games like LVP, Hero, actually, I think all the ones I just mentioned, but there's also others that cross into games from tech. Um, I would say that with this and actually with pretty much every type of fund, if they're not already investing in games, it's going to be really tough. Um, and it, it arguably, it, you have to question whether it would be worth it because um, if they don't understand the space, particularly if they don't understand entertainment, um, you may have a bit of an uphill battle. So the best thing you can do is look for those who specialise in what we do. And then you've got something where you're almost complete. Um, and at this point, really, you don't need money for dev, but you do, you do maybe need money for uh, marketing. So at this point, you've got the publishers who don't fund dev. Um, <sighs> You know, uh, I would say that if you're making games, it's, it's it's more likely if you're making a free to play game in particular, that most publishers will sit in this space. It's quite difficult to find a publisher who will fund a free to play game development. Um, but there are some. Uh, but, you know, some examples of, sort of publishers, some of them are like Tilting Point, Network 3, Zepto Lab, Superscale, um, actually fundamentally games we kind of fit in here as well. Um, and some of these will link into finishing funding. I think um, finishing funding was really popular a few years ago, and there was a few funds specifically talking about it. Um, but I think you know there are still a few publishers and other funds out there who will provide that kind of last bit of funding just to get you over the line. And then you launch your product or service. Um, now, I think the UA factoring is probably the biggest growth area, I would say, for funding in games uh, at the moment. And basically, it means that they're funding you to spend money on user acquisition. Um, there are various ways this happens. They can either base it on app store sales or they can base it on predicted data. Um, and there's a various range. There's from uh, publishers who will publish your game and do the UA funding as part of their publishing, all the way to the other way where you literally just get it like a loan. And in the middle, there's some middle ground where they aren't a publisher, but they will help you to manage uh, and spend the money wisely. Um, obviously, this is mainly for service games, obviously primarily mobile, but uh, you know it is starting to obviously grow into PC. Um, some examples, Buzz Capital, all the publishers I just mentioned, if they're doing uh, service games, uh, Pollen VC, Triple Dragon, Fundamentally Game, and there's quite a lot in this space. And then private equity. So I've put this here, although it's a little bit misleading. So Private equity is for when your company's already grown significantly and you want to raise growth capital. This is where we hear people talking about Series A, Series B, and so on. Um, the reason I put it here is you already have to have something on the market and be looking to grow beyond that. And you're generally talking, you know, uh, 5 million, 10 million plus, uh, that sort of scale. And then um, I put this in, you know, COVID government loans. So at the moment, there's the bounce back loans. Um, and there's also a larger one, I can't remember what it's called, but you know, the, the reason I've put it here is that you do have to have uh, financial accounts to get these loans because they are based on a percentage of your turnover. Um, but you know they're pretty favorable terms, they're available at the moment, it is a loan, um, but they're not repaid immediately. So it's definitely something that, you know, if, if it could be, you know, I know a lot of developers who've raised this now. I'm going to power through. Am I all right for time, Jamie? I'm just going to power through some. Yeah, tips. I think so. Yeah, just got a couple um, of minutes. Yeah. Okay, I will power through these and feel free to ask me questions. So, do your research on the fund. Every fund is different. The only way to really know what they're looking for is to ask them and to look at what they funded before. But genuinely, don't be afraid to ask them questions. Um, you know, if you just want to meet with them to ask what they're up to, in my experience, that's fine. And actually, it makes you look more informed. Uh, do your research early, you know. Do it before you actually need to raise funding so you can work out who you might want to talk to when you're ready. Uh, separate pitch decks per funding type. You cannot use the same pitch deck for a publisher as an equity investor. They need to be separate. 
because you have to pitch very different things. Um, know your numbers, uh, budgets, but also forecasts. You know, what, what do you think you're going to spend and what do you think you're going to make? Uh, funding is a journey. So, you know, funding, unfortunately, it's, it's very unlikely you're going to start your company you need and just be able to get on with making your game. I mean, that would be amazing, but it's very rare. In reality, you're probably going to go and get maybe, you know, a small amount of funding to make your prototype and then you're going to get a bit more from somewhere else and then you're going to get a bit further and maybe you'll go to a VC and so on. It's a journey and it's something that you need to assume as part of your business and game development process. And keep it simple. This I, this is really hard. You know, I, I probably do about 40 iterations of our pitch decks before I even get close to getting it right. But, you know, making your proposition as simple as possible with whilst getting the key message across is really important, but really difficult. And the only way to do it is iterate and get feedback. Um, it's very easy to, uh, to give feedback on people's pitches. I do it all the time. But when I have to do my own, it's really difficult to do. Um, and know your market and audience. Um, most pitch decks I see don't address this. So, you know, generally they, you know, they've got an idea for a game or a prototype, but they don't explain who their audience is. And then they don't, they don't then tie that to the game. So, okay, this is my audience. This is my game. This is why the features in my game will appeal to my audience. So tying it all together is really important. And the pitch decks that do that really stand out um, and show that you understand your market and your audience. And that, that's ultimately where you can start to generate money. Data, data, data. Um, you know, whether it's a free to play game and you're doing data analytics or whether it's a premium game and you're gathering data, you know, uh, from, you know, players feedback and reviews. Data is everything because whilst you don't have data, you are basically asking any funder to just take your word for the fact that your game is going to be successful. As soon as you have data that validates it, it's a game changer because you're not saying, I think my game's great. You're saying my audience thinks my game's great. That should be your entire focus of everything you do with your game. And you should be doing that for you, not just your investors. And it's all about proving yourself. So, you know, if you, it will be easier. You will need to prove yourself less with the game. You know, if you've had successes before, if you haven't, then you're going to have to get further with the game. You've just got to think about what it is that, you know, where is the risk? You know, if you're an inexperienced team, You've got to prove more because you're a higher risk. If you're an experienced team, then you know it becomes a bit easier. And pitch an opportunity, not a problem. You know, this you want to get the investor excited about wanting to invest in your project or your company. Um, so pitch what's in it for them, not the fact that they are essentially solving your problem of having no money. And then lastly, don't expect to offset all the risk. Um, you don't expect somebody to come in, fund everything, take all the risk away, and you just sit there and make your game. That is, you know, that's that's not going to be the way these things go. You're going to need to put risk in as well, and the investor is going to want to see that you're taking risk as well as them. Uh, and I think that's it. Just this link here um, is to a finance list, which I've seen um, more investors than I mentioned today uh, per sort of the categories that I've just discussed about. So hopefully that's useful. Great that's stuff. It. Thank you, Ella. Sorry, that was that's a bit fantastic. speed through. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. We are recording this, so we can, um, um, I can get the link out to everybody afterwards and we can, um, you know, if anybody wants to kind of see that again and sort of pause it and things, they can do and um, get the information. So, yeah, thanks for that. Um, no just a quick, uh, if you want to, by the way, if you want to ask any questions, I'm, I'm going to uh, ask Ella a few questions here now, but so if you've got anything, just pop them into the Q&A bit. Um, just a quick plug, because uh, I know he's watching Simon Smith, uh, Team 17, uh, as part of the uh, publisher list um, in our region. Um, he's waving now, very good. Um, so just mention them. And also, uh, as part of the VC, our next event um, in three weeks' time will be with Makers Fund, who are quite a major kind of VC investor. So um, just to add to that list. But um, as far as kind of um, funding is going at the moment, has has COVID, the current situation, has it has it affected things? Has it has it made it um, harder to get investment, or is are things pretty good? You know, are things much the same as they were before. Yeah, I mean, it's difficult. I mean, I, I I wouldn't say that I necessarily know every instance, and people might have other views on this. But from what I've seen. Um, the area that affected mainly was funds that were using the SEIS EIS scheme with high net worth angels. Um, 
simply because mm. uh, when COVID hit, it was kind of the end of the last financial year, beginning of the next. And so um, all the sort of people who were, who were looking to use the SEIS scheme got very nervous of, you know, where, where their money was going to go. So um, oh, right. I think, mm. so I think uh, what I've seen is that most of those funds are not currently active this financial year. I think mm. the so so the kind of being able to go and get 150k under EIS from one of the investment funds who works on that model um like Goldfinch and all those as far as I'm aware none of them are active um but that was a fairly right. small part of you know funding for games um it was a very useful route but you know it was only one route I I, I haven't seen that much effect um on the others I know that you know a lot of the investment funds were talking about you know making sure you've got more runway and things taking more time that may mm, be the case mm. but it's difficult to know I haven't seen mm. I haven't personally seen any others like pull out or not invest and actually we've seen quite a few new funds come up so my mm. perception is that things are okay um, because the games industry has been doing quite well now what will be interesting to see is once um, is longer term whether there will be any challenges you know if, if we do have a recession because of the impact of covid yeah, yeah that yeah. actually may have more of an impact than we've seen now and also once people lock down if numbers of players in games and revenues drop again whether that will affect things so i think we're okay for now yeah. but it could be that the impact is a bit slower to be seen i think yeah yeah good stuff uh, we've had a, a question from um anonymous attendee uh, do you have a list of publishers who just provide marketing? That's a good question. And um, so our finance list only lists the publishers who actually fund. Mm. So I don't have the other way. I mean, I'm sure, well, as far as I'm aware, so quite a lot of the publishers will just do marketing funding as well as development. Um, but I don't have a specific list, no. Um, mm. If you're doing a free-to-play game and you're looking for a mobile publisher, then you can pretty much, I would say, be certain that they will only do marketing. I'm yeah. not sure if that's I think you probably need to look at their portfolio and work yeah. out if your game fits within, you know, the publisher that you're looking at. I imagine. Yeah, and I mean, well, Simon, apologies. I should have had them on my list, absolutely, and I'm very <laughs> sorry. I, I, I'm extremely embarrassed. Um, but uh, you know, for example, I don't know Team Seventeen. You know, do they take games on that they only if they fund the dev or if they just market them? But I, I think that's a question for the publisher. Mm. I certainly, a lot of them will do both. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Anything. So, yeah. So, so, yeah. So, I think you know, you know, if the if if they don't have to fund the development, then it's probably a a good thing for them. So, I imagine that a lot of them would be interested. Mm. What about the um, platform holders at the moment? Are they funding stuff still? And you know, like, um, I, I, I mean, we've got a, an event with um, Xbox mm. in April, which is great. Um, you know, what, what what's the situation there? What are you hearing sort of um, from them? I'd, I'm not aware of that much change. I, to be honest, I don't work mm. that much in consoles, so I'm not as mm. aware, I think, of other people as other people um, on that. But I, I haven't seen any particular change or any startups either. I mean, certainly, like, I, I could be completely wrong here, but, you know, obviously PlayStation did have a big push towards doing a lot of smaller games a few years ago. I haven't seen that happening recently, but that might just be because I haven't seen it because it's not mm. really my area. Yeah. Well, we'll be, um, we'll be, as I say, we'll be hearing from Xbox and hopefully PlayStation soon as well. So we'll, we'll ask them directly. Um, what about? Um, have you heard of the um, the new fund that Yuki is lobbying the government for as well as part of the? Yeah. The, um, yeah. So that that could be exciting if that if that happens. I, I think it would be amazing. Right. I mean, you know, we it, it's interesting. I was doing a talk to some uh, startups in Switzerland uh, the other day, and you know, Switzerland has literally no government support whatsoever, no tax relief, nothing. And, you know, mm. they perceive the UK to have a lot of support, but actually, you know, when you're in it, it doesn't feel like that. And I think it's really needed. And I mean, you know, UK has been pushing for this stuff for years, um, but particularly mm. with COVID and with Brexit, like, I think this is it's so important. It's a huge difference because, you know, particularly as the UK Games Fund does, you know, covering that gap where it's too risky for private investors. Um, yeah. You know, that that's where public funding should come in and I, I don't think there's apart from the UK Games Fund there's not really anybody else in that gap so it would be a mm. game changer really yeah yeah no so um yeah fingers crossed for that really um as I say if anybody's got any other questions I'm just gonna ask a couple more uh things of, of Ella and then um uh, we'll move on but um 
Yeah, I was also going to ask about um, these new funds that are coming out. I think you mentioned the Moonrise and there's like a, a Wings fund and things that are kind of funding diverse stuff. I think there's a Tentacle Zone uh, mentoring kind of funding mm. thing. You know, there seems to be more stuff coming online that, that is funding, again, kind of like that the entry level, the smaller stuff, but still, you yeah. know, really important. Yeah, I think it's really good. And I think, you know, things like Wings Fund, which have a specific initiative beyond just making money, is really powerful. Mm big step for the industry because I think you know it, it allows us to you know fund things that wouldn't necessarily fill the fit into the normal you know the existing things and I think also like I mean the Arts Council is a good example where you know they fund art projects not commercial projects now they are limited on what they've been doing in games and you know they could do more but I do think the premise of people investing in things not just purely about revenue is really exciting mm. yeah yeah fantastic um, you, you mentioned um, briefly about angels. Um, do you have a list of angels on your site as well, like personal? We don't. Or... We don't because no. it's you know they don't advertise themselves, so you know it's not really something. This is what I you know. There's we yeah we, we know there's some sort of high profile. I mean, like I was talking about Ian Livingston earlier, yeah. and um, you know Hero Capital, and you know, Ian's quite a sort of well-known angel investor. But um, it's quite tricky to kind of find these <laughs> these individuals who have kind of say made their money in the games industry and want to um, uh, invest in other projects. What's the kind of best way of going about finding these people? It's really hard. I mean, in my experience, it generally comes through you know, having a network. And building relationships um you know so mm. i think it you know it, it, it's not a you know obviously that's not a quick route it's not like you can just turn around tomorrow and do that and find an angel i mean there are ways to do it that are more formal so for example mm. and i have not tried these so i can't i don't know if they're any good but you know there are now these ai tools uh, that basically you can use on linkedin that uh, connect you with angel investors um you know, and there are also obviously accelerator programs who have, uh, you know, connections to specific angels uh, and also these angel investor networks. You know, if you want to do yeah. something more formal and more direct, I think those are probably your routes uh, to doing it. Mm. Um, yeah. Otherwise, it really is just relationships and networking. But right now, that's really yeah. hard, obviously, particularly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, I suppose there's you know some good online events around at the moment. There's Pocket Gamer the other week, and um, you know there's an event that I'm working on the GamesIndustry.biz Live, which is going to have a lot of mm. investors and, and angels and things. So I think it's probably yeah. trying to get to as oh. many of these events as you possibly can. Oh right? yeah, I mean absolutely. Like you know, if if you want to raise funding, you should be at every event talking to everybody um, because it will take time, and and you never know, you know. Uh, who is going to be the right person you're gonna to have to talk to a lot of people to work out who are the ones for you so absolutely yeah. like you should be at every event yeah good stuff fantastic thank you so much for uh, joining us today Ella it's uh, really interesting and uh, really useful for people and um, yeah good luck with all the projects and things and uh, thank yeah you. thanks again and hopefully we'll catch up soon maybe in person this year who knows yeah <laughs> brilliant <laughs> cool cheers <laughs> yeah take care Ella see you soon bye bye and uh, brilliant, fantastic. That was Ella. And um, we're going to hear now from uh, Deborah Farley. So hello, Deborah. Are you there? Come in. Hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. <laughs> That's great. Good stuff. Um, so, uh, yeah, are you happy to kind of do a um, quick presentation yep. about the transfuser um, sure. stuff that you've got? Yeah. I'll hand over to you. Again, I'll stop my video yeah. and uh, mute my mic. So it'll just um, Perfect. concentrate on yourself. Sure, excellent. Well, that was um, a great introduction to funding and managed to slip me in nicely in terms of, of, of what's um, up and coming with Transfuser. Um, so for those who don't know um, um, who we are and what Transfuser is, um, we're part of the UK Games Talent and Finance Community Interest Company. Uh, we're a not-for-profit company um, and our remit is to support the UK's early stage games development and digital interactive businesses. Um, and the creative ecosystem in terms of both companies and individuals. So how that's kind of uh, materialized is through the two project uh, programs that we run, which are the UK Games Fund. Um, so it supports early stage indie, indie dev companies and um, providing grant funding of up to 20K um, to take you know, your game idea um, to the next stage of development. Um, and I'm going to speak about Transfuser, which is a student and graduate games development program. And what we're doing is looking to kind of boost 
the talent ecosystem and, and development route. Uh, we help teams come together, they develop and create their new IP um, and, and as part of a learning journey um, through real projects. Um, so a little bit about um, what we've what we what, what we've been involved certainly last year. We've been running the program for five years now. So yet last year was our fifth year. We're going into our sixth, um, and of course, world events made that uh, turned everything kind of a bit in its head. But we were resolute in terms of we wanted to provide um, the teams with an opportunity and individuals the opportunity to take part in Transfuser, regardless of what what was what was happening across the world. Um, there was no reason why we couldn't do it, and we wanted to create the, um, a platform for as many um, as possible to do it. Many of the teams and the students that were taking part um, had obviously their world turned upside down, um, and it gave them opportunity to connect, engage. Um, and part of the focus that we ended up um, kind of looking at was how to help um, these individuals and team members um, to create their portfolio, to develop that further so that as they went on um, after um, university and graduating, they had more to show in terms of for, um, for employers. And also we had the element of our business development and setting up their own studio. So this very busy um, slides purposefully looking like this um, because it kind of represented you know a lot of the stuff that we had going on over a very short period of time in the summer everything went virtual um, and so we had pitching online uh, we had our games with academy uh, which provides resource and tools for teams um, and individuals to look at you know um, some of the, the key areas of setting up your an indie studio um, we had a virtual careers fair as part of our virtual showcase, which was called Pro to Play. Um, and we had a weeks long showcase where um, for teams got to um, virtually show off their, their what they had created over the duration of, of the program over the summer. Um, overall, we had 27 teams take part in this. Um, we had, I think it was around about actually 120 team members um, who were involved. Um, about 50,000 hours of development they managed to chalk up um, and um, yeah we, we, we had our, our photo play um, showcase at the end which is a week long as I said um, and we had um, our, our website where all the teams um, content was displayed um, each team went off with a, a two minute video around about which focused on their team and the game that they developed and um, showcasing that and they all had the opportunity to pitch um, for funding um, and um, we selected a number to come and pitch for the final um, round of funding um, and we, we selected four teams um, and um, to receive the, the 20k. Um, the teams were live streaming, uh, we had a whole weekend of live streaming, I think it was about 18 hours in total and uh, they all had the opportunity to, to show off their games to the world through Twitch. Um, and as I said, we had our careers fair uh, in which we had a number of, of studios take part um, who were looking for, um, for teams um, and individuals um, for their careers. Um, all teams also went away with these digital accreditations. This is a project that we've been working on since the very inception of Transfuser. And it's in, um, <clears throat> these things are digital badges and it recognizes the achievement that the teams or the individual have done over the course of, of taking part in Transfuser. And it's something that they can pop onto a LinkedIn profile or a digital uh, resume. So people can actually see, oh, look, they've taken part in that and this is the project or this is the, 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 the um, program that they've taken part in it and the element. We've got, I think, a suite of about 10 of these. So these are just a couple from last year that are on the slide. So as you can see, it was a busy summer and um, the teams did exceptionally well. There was lots of uncertainty going on all around them, kind of exterior. And also we had a lot of kind of different changing and planning to do. Um, in terms of just how we were going to deliver things like the showcase and deliver things virtually. So they did an outstanding, outstanding job and, and we're really, really sort of whole pile of resilience through it. Um, and as a result, we've, we've shaped this year's offering um, to, 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 to take into consider our learning from last year um, and also to, to shape our programs for that. So this is what we're offering um, this year. We've got three um, individual um, pathways. Um, our enterprise pathway, our employment pathway, um, and also the environment pathway. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about this. I don't have a whole pile of time to, to go into loads of depth about all of the, the, the pathways, uh, but there's, there's certainly more information that you can find out on our website, and I'll go into lots of details if, if this is something of interest to you. Um, 
So we have our enterprise pathway. So this is kind of along the traditional routes of where, where TransFuser kind of started off from. Um, and it's all about wanting to start a studio. This is for those who um, have, you know, are, are, are love making games, um, but they want to see if they can do it and set up their own indie studio. Um, so this is um, aimed at graduates. So you will have graduated between um, June 2019 up to September 21. So obviously taking in this year's cohort of, of graduates. Um, and yes, yeah, you'll, you'll have the focus of wanting to investigate what is it like to start up a studio? What do I need? What tools do I need? What resources do I need to do? You know, how does how does this prototype that I'm developing, how can this act as a springboard um, into creating a, a sustainable studio? Um, so there's there's various um, different areas there that you can read on the slide yourself without me having to, to read them out for you in terms of what the teams get out of it. Um, but ultimately, there will be kind of the virtual pitching events, there will be virtual showcase, uh, there will be facilitator support and there'll be access to our uh, Games Biz Academy again. So um, lots of lots of ways to get involved. And then ultimately, there'll be the, the opportunity to pitch to the UK Games Fund uh, for the 20K um, Games Funding and um, get, getting selected for, for that. So um, that's the, the ultimate what it reaches up into. And uh, the, the, the second kind of pathway to look at is um, our employment pathway. Um, so this is um, a slightly wider remit in terms of um, this is open to just general university students so if you're studying between first, um, second or uh, sorry, first, second, third or fourth of the year in Scotland. Um, then um, you can take part in this and um, also takes into graduates as well. So if you've graduated between June 2019 um, up to the end of this year, you can take part as well. So this is this is the kind of ultimate summer game jam we're kind of um, we're couching this as. So teams will have a number of uh, time to, to get involved in this. This is more of a, um, I would say, a, 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 you know, teams don't have to work full time on this if, if they can't. Um, whereas with the enterprise pathway, it's a full time commitment that we'd ask from the teams. Um, whereas team members can can work out their own schedule and, and fit it together. Um, games that are successfully submitted to our itch.io page um, will be considered for review um, by our Jam, Jam user selected uh, judges. Um, we'll have the virtual a virtual careers fair, so teams will be able to show off their portfolio or individuals will be able to show off their portfolios um, and uh, we'll, they'll, they'll, um, to, to prospective employers. Um, again, uh, there'll be uh, the virtual showcase through the HEO page, um, and then we'll select a number of individual teams um, to then go on and, and be highlighted or spotlighted in the enterprise framework um, showcase. So uh, there'll be an opportunity for teams um, to, to, to get their moment in, 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 the, in the starlight uh, with that. So again, good digital, all team members and individuals will come away with digital credentials. But ultimately, it's an opportunity to make games to develop their skills, to develop their portfolio, um, and just to, to give themselves an added edge um, uh, when they're looking to get hired. Um, this is a completely new pathway, um, our environment pathway, um, as, you know, otherwise known as wanting to save the world. So this is for people who are um, you know, wanting to use their games to communicate um, and to communicate a message. Um, and creating a game for good um, kind of that can um, shift mindsets. Um, the uh, COP26 um, is going to be run in, in Glasgow um, in November this year. And um, there's been a lot of kind of stuff publicised around about it. And we felt that this would be a great opportunity to engage with that in some way and, and help um, to, to, to showcase and platform um, games in this light as well. So there'll be a small number of teams taking part in this. Um, again, they'll need to fall into the graduate bracket. So we'll be looking for um, graduating between June 2019 and September 2021. Um, and what we're looking for is obviously that kind of, that cross kind of fertilization of, of disciplines. So whether it's you know kind of a game uh, a game element you know so people have got the, the, the skills and tools to obviously be able to make a game but also whether it's you know from a you know kind of some kind of bioscience or whether it's from kind of um, an engineering background um, to get these team members to come together and create a game which is for good and um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a commercial entity that they come out with at the end um, but if if that, that is something there'll be the opportunity for them to be able to um, to be seen by the UK Games Fund and take part so. So that's a little bit about our um, three pathways and how you can engage with Transfuser. Um, who should apply? Um, you know, looking for people who are looking to take their first steps into setting up their own in the studio. We're looking for people who are ambitious and want to go that extra mile to land their dream job. 
you know, if you're wanting to create your own IP, if you want to work as part of a team, hone skills and develop um, your, your, your offering, um, people who are wanting to put that into, pra their, their pra into practice and um, their learning into practice um, and wanting to make some connections in the industry. Ultimately, we're just really looking for people who are wanting to invest in um, invest their time now for their future tomorrow. So these people who are aware of that, they need to do that a little bit extra um, to, to, to land their job or to set up their studio. Um, and therefore, there you should apply definitely. So where can you find out more? Um, we've just launched our, our wonderful new uh, website. So it's all been um, revamped and it's looking very sparkly and new. And um, so please go ahead and take a look at that. There's loads of details there um, around about the pathways. Um, we have this wonderful um, jobs board um, or teams board as it's called. So if you want to take part and you don't have a team, then go ahead and fill out a form um, that's related to that. And then we can publicize it through our board and we can match you up with maybe teams or we can you can start a team from scratch. Um, all is the access for all pathways. So depending on what pathway that you want to go on, you can you can promote that through there. Um, you'll be able to see all of the, the applications um, up and the kind of high level details. But to get in contact with people, you'll be required to get a, a password and, and access to that um, and sign up for that. Um, just while we're here, um, as probably there'll be a number of people who will be interested in the UK Games Fund and, and if we get any questions around about that, um, um, just to say that um, I can confirm that we do have uh, funding for uh, 2021 20, 20, to 22, um, and we're still working out in the details of that. Um, the next call is going to be our, um, our announced in the next couple of months, so please make sure that you sign up um, via our website, which is there to our newsletter, and um, that always has all of the information around about our funding rounds and, and what's coming up and when they're opening. So please um, check that out um, there in terms of finding out more information um, about our next round of funding. Um, likely in terms of criteria, for those who are wondering, it'll probably be similar to previous years. Um, but yeah, we're just kind of forming up um, and, and getting that into place just now. So watch the space for more information around about um, the UK Games Fund. If you want any more information about Transfuser and what's happening there, we can certainly tell you lots about that. So please don't hesitate to get in contact with us and um, emails there and our Twitter address as well. And that is all that I have to say at the moment. <laughs> Fantastic. Brilliant. Uh, thank you very much, Deborah. That was uh, right. great. Very exciting as well. Um, so if there's um, any um, universities or colleges, for example, mm -hmm. that want to kind of get more information yeah. and maybe kind of get that information out to their students on their games courses, can yeah. they just kind of get in touch with yourself? Is that the best? Yeah, yeah. Drop me drop me an email or if you if you use the help address or I'm Deborah at UKGamesFund.com, you can get in contact with me. Now's a great time. Um, we're just onboarding all of what we call our local hubs. So if you have, um, you know, if you are a university and you have students who would like to get involved in this, you can become a, a local hub and represent um, a team within the programme. So um, uh, certainly the Enterprise Pathway, um, or if you've just got students who would like to get involved with the Employment Pathway, that's kind of easy. And um, yeah, they can they can do that. So please drop me drop me a line and I'll, I'll be more than happy to share information about how they can get involved and become part of our local hub network. It'd be great. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Um, that's that's really good. I, I love all the uh, games for good as well. It's nice that it's tying into the event uh, that's happening this year in in Glasgow. You know yeah. the environmental. Yeah. Uh, is it is is it about just the environment or is it just generally about it's, kind of it's climate positive... change? Yeah. In terms of yeah, like what's yeah. happening with COP twenty six, it's it's looking at climate change. So we're just we're we're in the middle of just kind of finalising. You know how what's what's happening, what we're going to look at, what the criteria is that we're looking for in terms of what we'll expect the teams to do, and it may be in line with some of the the topics from that but it, it, it may be slightly different so um yeah. again more information will kind of follow on and and you know in the next couple of weeks once we kind of bottom that out so yeah uh, i've had a good question here from uh, james mm -hmm. james battersby is it possible to apply to multiple pathways at the same time so for example you might want to do the enterprise set up your own company and do the yeah. environment one yeah. as well um, yeah, in terms of, um, the, I think the only the, the issue with that might be timing, just in terms of how the programs fall. When the app, the app mm. there'll be a slight stagger when kind of the applications or the 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 the, the um um the kind of team registration certainly for them the the employment pathway will open. Um, in terms of the, you, you wouldn't be able to kind of like 
if you didn't get into, say, for example, the employment one, then then try and apply to Transfuser because the application time will be slightly different. Um, I haven't got confirmation of when the, the environment one, the exact times of that yet, so I'm not I'm not sure with that. Mm. But certainly with the an enterprise and the employment one, um, you know, we'd like teams to just be quite focused in terms of yeah, we definitely want to go for the um, enterprise pathway. This is we're really keen to uh, you know find out more about setting up the studio and if this is this is where we want to go. Whereas if you just know that you want a career in the games industry, then you know the, the certainly you know the the the, the um, employment pathway one would probably be the better fit. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Um, and about the UK Games Fund, obviously you said yeah. that. Um, it's going to be announced in the next couple of months. Mm -hmm. um, is it going to be um, similar to what we've had in previous years? Is it going to be like up to, is it up to £30,000 for the, um, it, um, or have you not? With, it, it's, hmm. In previous years, it's been up to £20,000 um, that, right. that, that was done. Um, and so I'm, I'm not quite sure what the, 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 the kind of parameters of, of, of what the funding is going to look like at the moment. So I'm, I'm not quite sure, but I, I would imagine it would be similar to that. Um, you know, um, I, yeah, I so I can't, I, I'm not quite sure. I wouldn't want to say it's going to be this or not, and it's <laughs> and it turns out being something different. So at the moment, I can't, uh, yeah, I, I'm not quite sure how it's how it's going to work out. Is the um, is it it's going to be a similar number of companies um, funded, or um, because each year it seems to be more and more companies? So, um, yeah, so I think. I think last year we had quite a bumper year in terms of mm. we had to we had to kind of change quite significantly because of what happened with obviously the pandemic um, mm. and we were able to tap into some you know some further funding so we could fund more so that was that was great I mean it was just I think there was a 32 or 38 companies who ended up getting you know we were able to f fund fully so um yeah so it, it, again it was <laughs> it was different so yeah I I, I take I, I you know I can't say it's going to be exactly the same this year um we just need to kind of see how it how it pans out and what the what the criteria is also a lot of it kind of also depends on you know the kind of applications we get and then level applications and what kind of stage people are at and you know what their what their ask is as well so yeah yeah absolutely and, but obviously as soon as um you know this information's out there we'll we'll make yep. sure that all our members uh, get yeah. that info and get to applying yeah brilliant yeah. Uh, well I, I think we've run out of time there deborah brilliant. so um yeah. thanks Hi. ever thank so you. much for um yep. uh, coming along today and um if you. any of our members want to get in touch with you it's uh, deborah at ukgamesfund.com yeah that's the one yep yeah perfect brilliant stuff thank you if you could just close down the screen as well deborah well, and then i'll just sure. sort of finish up the uh but uh, that was really great, and um, I'm, we've got—I know we've got quite a few universities and uh, students watching, so that's great. Um, thank you, thank you uh, to Deborah and to Ella as well earlier on uh, for joining us today. Uh, thank you to all of you <laughs> for joining us today. Uh, our next Game Republic event is in three weeks' time, uh, as I mentioned earlier, on the 11th of March, and we have Makers Fund. Uh, so we've got Archie Stonehill joining us to talk about their VC fund, and they've been doing some really exciting stuff. Um, we've also um, got an event coming at the end of March, uh, Speakers uh, TBC, which should be cool, and obviously Xbox as well in April. Um, I'll keep you posted on any events that are, that are going on, any funds, anything that uh, I hear about uh, in emails. Uh, if you need anything else, just get in touch with me. Um, I'm just here in my office in Saltaire, I'm happy to help you all. Um, but uh, until next time, um, take care and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks everyone. Take care. Bye.